Um, so next up, we have our demonstration for the environmental science course. So we have a short overview of what are some of the environmental science uh, demonstrations or labs, virtual labs that are available, which will be uh, taken up by Mr. Sanjay from the science department. So Nancy, whenever you're ready, you can start. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, MC, for allowing me to take this time to do the demonstration. Uh, thank you to all the participants for your patience with us uh, till now. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this is the final uh, virtual lab demonstration, and this is from the environmental science uh, program. All right, so uh, we have uh, covered biology, chemistry, and uh, physics labs. And Beyond Labs has those uh, platforms, the lab benches for these uh, different uh, subjects. However, for environmental science, uh, Beyond Labs, I guess, is still working on uh, creating some lab benches uh, for practicals. But uh, today I will be using uh, the ecology lab bench from biology to do a simple uh, demonstration. And uh, I hope that will give you an idea of what uh, we do uh, in our environmental science program, uh, in particular with our uh, labs uh, sessions. Okay, so before I go to that uh, lab demonstration, just to give you an overview of uh, what environmental science is, uh, just, just a refresher. So basically, environmental science is an inter interdisciplinary study. Okay? And this field combines uh, different studies uh, related to uh, physics, okay? uh, uh, chemistry, biology, as well as uh, environmental sciences. And uh, not only that, but it also includes studies in ethics and political science. So it encompasses a whole lot of subjects. Okay? So environmental science is a broad field of studies that uh, will allow you to learn different uh, skills from the different uh, science subjects as well as uh, the different uh, uh, human studies all right so why is it important to study environmental science it's uh, important uh, in particular when we want to understand how our natural world functions okay and that is that is the natural environment as well as the human uh, built environment and also understand how we interact with the environment, okay? And the most important uh, thing about studying environmental science is uh, finding out the ways in which our action impact the uh, environment in the long term and how we can deal with uh, these impacts, okay? how we can address these impacts to ensure sustainability, okay? And environmental uh, science uh, focuses on topics uh, like uh, pollution, climate change, and so on. All right. And um, for demonstration today, I will be looking at the impact of climate change, uh, which is uh, human related, and its impact on uh, some species. Okay. So like I said, uh, there is still no environmental science lab bench for now, but due to its interdisciplinary nature, we also study ecology. Okay? Uh, remember, we also study chemistry and physics as well as biology. And ecology is one of the important uh, uh, subjects that we cover under environmental science. Okay? So I'm going to go over to the ecology lab bench and do a short demonstration okay, on the impacts of climate change. So climate change is an issue that is uh, impacting the global communities nowadays and it has been uh, affecting us for some time now and the IPCC which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has projected that the impacts of climate change will continue uh, in the future so it is important to understand how the impacts of climate change will affect uh, the species that are living in our various ecosystems so uh, on this ecology lab bench, uh, 
as you know, one of my colleagues, uh, Daniel, has already demonstrated, uh, uh, you can run different simulations, okay, and there are different uh, abilities of these lab bands that you can use to simulate real life uh, uh, interactions or real life experiences uh, happening in nature. So, for this lab, I'm going to look at uh, a particular biome. Okay. So biome is basically a large geographical area with a certain climate, uh, certain um, ecosystem and so on. A good one will be tropical rainforest. That is a biome which is present in uh, Pacific Island countries uh, like Fiji. But uh, today I'm going to look at uh, a biome which is known as the temperate uh, deciduous forest. And this is a biome that is present in North America and some parts of Europe. But we can always relate this demonstration back to the uh, tropical region to make it more relevant for us in the Pacific Island countries. So I am going to work with three species. Okay? I'm going to select the species from this uh, species select uh, uh, window. The first uh, species that I'm going to uh, select is mouse. So I just have to uh, click on the mouse and, and add it into the species uh, tracking window. The next uh, species will be lynx. Okay. I'll also add that to the species tracking window. As I add those, you can see them appearing in the species tracking window with their set uh, population. And these are population uh, uh, already uh, set into the lab bins. And it's like the default values. We can change those population according to what we think uh, would be right out in uh, nature. And the final species that I'm going to add here is grass. All right. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the abiotic variables window, this specifies all the climatic conditions that are associated with our biome, the one that we selected here, and that is temperate deciduous forest, okay? And this biome is usually found at latitudes 30 degrees. And the elevation that we are going to work with is a zero elevation. We can increase the elevation uh, accordingly if we want to move up to the higher elevation, but for now we'll just look at uh, uh, zero elevation. That means uh, flat areas, okay? And the temperature that is associated with uh, uh, temperate deciduous forest is okay, within this range. So the maximum temperature is about 20.9 degrees Celsius and the uh, minimum is 4.1 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay? And these are all the uh, abiotic variables associated with that biome. Okay? And the nutrient level for this uh, demonstration is set to high. All right. And the important uh, uh, component on the lab bins okay, on this uh, ecology lab bins is the lab controller okay so this is known as the controller and this is what you use to simulate your uh, experiment all right so what we have here is a normal uh, biome okay with its uh, normal conditions okay? and that is the first simulation that we're going to run let's see what the population of these three different species uh, look like okay, if we run the simulation for a period of uh, five years. Remember, you can change the uh, the duration okay, from days to years by just clicking on plus button here. So I'm going to increase it to one year. So we we will be able to see the changes uh, yearly. Right, so I am set. Now all I have to do is click on run. Okay. So that will bring up the graphs showing the different uh, population of the species. Okay, so I let it run for about five years. Remember, on the uh, x-axis, okay, we have the time. All right, so it will run for five years, and you cannot uh, you can start to observe the patterns, okay, the trends of population uh, uh, increase, okay, 
with the normal uh, abiotic variables with the normal temperature. And we can see a constant uh, growth. Okay, So we can see the constant growth for lynx population as well as the grass population. That is with normal climatic conditions. Okay, So we can save our results. Okay? And we can open the lab book and view uh, the result here. Okay, so this is what our result look like with normal uh, climatic conditions. All right, so the IPCC has uh, projected that uh, in the near future the global average temperature is projected to raise uh, to increase about uh, 2.5 to uh, maybe 3.5 above. Okay, and the that is. Uh, one important uh, factor associated with climate change, okay, increase of uh, global temperatures. So what we are going to do next is to run a simulation uh, with uh, climate change scenario. So I'm going to change the temperature, okay, increase the te temperature by 3.5 to uh, project uh, to simulate what the population of this species will look like uh, with the changing climate. Right, so I will reset the time, okay, and increase the temperatures by 3.5. So if I increase this, it will go up to 24.4. That would be uh, the maximum temperature, and the minimum temperature would be about uh, 7.6 degrees Celsius. Right, so we assume this is the temperature associated with uh, climate change, the projected uh, global temperature increase. Right, so again, I'm going to run the simulation. Okay? And we can also look at the graphs and see how it changes. There might not be uh, big changes, as you can see from the uh, real time simulation. But when we save it and compare it uh, with the First simulation that we did, then you can see some differences there, uh, in particular with the population of uh, uh, lynx. Okay, so I'm going to leave it uh, run for another five year, okay, uh, five year period. And I, I will stop the simulation uh, at that point. Okay. So Remember, we are trying to simulate uh, uh, a real life uh, uh, event that is happening in nature, and it uh, changes according to uh, climatic uh, variables. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And again, if I open the lab book, I have uh, to save the results from first simulation and the current one that we just did. So if you look at the population of uh, lynx, okay, in the first the simulation, uh, the lynx population is uh, like constantly increasing, but the, the rate at which it increase, uh, the rate at which the population is growing, is uh, slower in the second simulation. Okay, so you can see the difference. Now. Along with uh, climate change, we also have some catastrophic events that can take place. For example, uh, in the tropics, uh, in the tropical regions like uh, in the Pacific Island countries, we always experience uh, uh, tropical cyclones. Okay, during the uh, cyclone season, uh, we also have floods, wildfires, and so on. Okay, these are catastrophic events that can have uh, impacts on the local uh, species population. Okay. Uh, that are found in the Pacific Island countries. So these uh, ecology lab bands also allow you to simulate the uh, population and see what will happen if a catastrophic uh, event uh, takes place. Okay, So that is what we are going to simulate, uh, simulate next. And again, I am going to uh, reset the lab, just the time. Okay, just going to reset the time. And I will in input catastrophes at two year intervals, okay, two year intervals uh, during that simulation. And we'll be able to see what effect the catastrophe will have on the population. Okay, 
So I'm going to um, run the simulation again and note that I will input catastrophe at two year interval, okay, two years interval. I'm going to run the simulation now. And at two years, I will click on the catastrophe. And there is a button that allows you to do that uh, on the ecology lab bench. Okay, so the simulation is moving towards two years now. Okay, so at two years, we have our first catastrophe. Okay, and I will include another catastrophe at the fourth year interval. Okay, so there is a second catastrophe. And let the simulation run till uh, year five. Okay, so we have reached the uh, 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 five year interval of uh, simulation. I'm going to save this. And now let's uh, look at the result uh, of the population when we introduce catastrophes, like I've said, uh, weather, tropical cyclones, flooding, wildfires. Okay, so if I go to the last uh, result that I have, we can see a two year interval. Uh, however, uh, it's not exactly a two year interval here, but you can see where I've introduced the catastrophes. You can see a, a sudden dip in the population of the blue uh, of the grass and the lynx. Okay, so you can see the dips here. This uh, signifies the catastrophe that I've uh, included in the simulation. Okay, so it helps you understand how catastrophes and also ch changing climatic conditions can affect the population of uh, species uh, for the different biomes. And we can relate that to the uh, tropical region who are in the Pacific Island countries. Okay, All right. So, uh, uh, the last thing I want to look at is uh, the data. Currently, we're just looking at the graphs, but there's also an option that uh, will allow you to look at the data sets, the, the numbers that are associated with this graph. So if you click on show data, okay, you will exactly get the values okay, associated with the graph. So these are the same values that are plotted onto the graph. And if you want to get the exact value, you can always come back to this uh, data table and uh, get the values from there. Also, uh, what we are looking at right now is just population. If you want to look at biomass, for example, you can just click on the biomass option there, okay? And you can see the graph for biomass as well. All right, so that is uh, just a, a simple demonstration of some of the labs that we do uh, in our environmental science program. This is just one. We also run simulation for different uh, for different uh, occurrences that happen in nature. And those are mostly uh, created by the staff and given to the students to do the labs at their own time. Most of the labs on this ecology lab bins are presets. That means they're already created and we can just work with them. Okay, so um, if you want to learn more about the environmental science and the interesting uh, uh, topics that we have to offer, you can always join us. Uh, come join us at the uh, School of Science and Technology at UniFiji. We are always uh, happy to welcome you. Okay? Our multidisciplinary environmental science program has the uh, different topics uh, in biology, chemistry, physics, GIS, which is another interesting field, uh, environmental impact assessment, climate change, conservation uh, and management, public health, and so on. Okay? So feel free and reach out to us if you want to join our environmental science program. And our enrollment is also open. You can always feel free to visit our website. Okay. And uh, just a final point that I want to put across here is that environmental science is one of the priority areas for the government of Fiji for 2022, that is this year. And they have set aside a, a Month of uh, scholarships for environmental science uh, uh, students. Okay, so it is a priority area, and our program that we offer is affordable. If you are a private uh, private uh, sponsored student, you can join us and 
uh, talk about our fees, which is quite affordable uh, in Fiji. Okay? We have the most affordable fees uh, in Fiji with the environmental science program. Okay, so uh, that's all for my end. Um, I will hand it back to MC. Thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can also uh, ask our uh, staffs. They will be able to help you. Thank you, MC. Hey, thank you, Lindsay. If uh, can you please stop sharing the screen so I can share mine? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, participants, for bearing with us. Um, before we move on to our final presenter, I'd also like to share some information regarding our new course. So in addition to what Mr. Lancy has just mentioned, environmental science is one of the demanding courses here at the University of Fiji. A lot of students show interest in joining um, in this program. And if you're also interested, then do inquire with us. In addition to that, we have a new program, which is the Agric Bachelor of Agricultural Engineering program. So if you are completing your year 13 this year, early this year, and you're thinking of which course or which program to apply to, then we have a new agricultural engineering program that has been approved by FHEC. And we are now enrolling students into semester one 2022. So if you have any further questions, then you can always contact any one of us from the department I have shared our head of department, Dr. Ramendra Prasad's email through the chat as well. So please do feel free to contact us regarding any of the programs that you are interested in. Moving on, moving on, I'd like to pass on the stage to Mr. O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill is our lab technician here at UniPG and he'll be sharing the virtual lab experiences. So over to you, Ronil. Uh, thank you, MC. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Uh, dear prospective students, teachers, and colleagues, as the laboratory technician for Department of Science, I would like to say that Beyond Less has proven to be an innovative and comprehensive virtual laboratory platform. It has permitted our students to continue with their practical classes despite the pandemic physical restrictions. The platform has also enabled our staffs as academics to continue with their laboratory research in their areas of expertise. As you have already gained some information on how the software functions, most of the virtual lab simulation platform has been built upon actual experimental data, along with the most advanced available models. Now, each lab in platform is designed to support hundreds of experiments. All the labs can be accessed freely along with detailed experimental procedure that illustrates step-by-step -step instruction for proper analysis. For example, while carrying out an experiment in chemistry, students will be able to select, observe, and explore different types of chemicals, reagents, and standards. Uh, as you have already seen by one uh, by my colleague Sanjay, he had demonstrated about how the chemistry lab is operated in the platform. Now, this may not be able. Now, the chemicals, there are certain chemicals which cannot be used freely in an open lab due to its chemical properties. However, with Beyond's lab software, you are open to explore and expand your knowledge anytime and anywhere. I would like to thank our professor and head of department for providing us with the opportunity to organize this virtual event and providing relevant information to our prospective students on the importance of virtual uh, Beyond Lab software. On this note, I would also like to thank our hardworking academics who have worked tirelessly and contributed all their efforts in working out and preparing labs for our students. Together, we ensure that no student from the cohort is left out as practical classes serve as one of the vital component of science program. Now, we want our students to learn. 
and have broader experience in their field of study. I assure that you will enjoy your learning journey with our highly qualified professionals as we know and understand our students better. Our team and I would like to wish you all the best in your upcoming examinations. And we look forward to seeing you join our science program soon. Until then, stay safe and take care. Thank you. Over to you, MC. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, thank you all presenters for your time. Um, I'd like to give a special appreciation to all our participants joining us from various parts of Fiji today. So um, thank you, Rekha. She has left. Uh, Kilifi, thank you for joining us from the beginning and staying with us. I am sure you have learned a lot regarding the physics and the environmental science programs that you are interested in today. Uh, along with that, uh, we also had Tupeni, Nazmon, um, and also Shivantika. So thank you uh, for participating in this Beyond Labs and Virtual Lab experiment demonstrations. Um, I know that due to COVID-19, most of us are restricted in terms of resources, in terms of access to um, the traditional labs. But these virtual labs give us a good practice of how we can carry out experiments on our own. And as scientists, we need to do that. We need to go out of our way and learn independently. We can't just uh, take a step back and wait for situations to normalize, right? So as scientists, uh, we take this opportunity, use different platforms, and try to uh, build on our existing knowledge. I know that these virtual labs might not have the same gist as the traditional ones do, but it helps us acquire those technical skills. And through these demonstrations, we were able to showcase you what some of the experiments that uh, some of the experiments are that we use here at UniPG through the Bayon Labs platform. So thank you once again for taking out your time and joining us. We really, really appreciate your presence, especially those joining us from the outer islands as well. So if you still have any queries, then feel free to email us or contact us through email or through um, phone. We have shared the links with you in the chat box. If you want any one of us to be directly in contact with you, then do ask us and we'll be happy to share our email addresses with you. With this word, I'll pass on the mic to Professor Shoket and Dr. Raman for their final words before we wrap up today's event. Uh, thank you, MC. I already talked. I believe this time it is good if our HOD can talk and close the event. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Zafia. Um, thank you to all the participants who have been here throughout this and bearing with us. Uh, we had wonderful presentations and demonstrations in terms of our virtual lab sessions. And so this, is, this platform actually allows you to take the labs with you wherever you are though it is virtual, but you can take it with you. You can do it from your home. So this pandemic has like compelled us to study from home. And this is one of the platforms that the university has adopted. So you can always take the lab with you whenever you are free uh, on demand, you can use it. So this makes uh, learning more of uh, what you want and you can do more free learning as we call it, uh, rather than restricting it to, to the lab situation. Uh, all in all, thank you very much. Uh, for attending it and all the best with the examinations and if you have any questions or queries uh, please feel free to ask us drop an email or if you have our phone contacts just drop a call and we will uh, always be there to assist you thank you very much and all the best with the examinations thank you dr amendra just a final note to all our participants we will be sharing the certificates with you electronically um, so please keep an eye through the email that you have sent. So we will be sending out the electronic copies of the certificates within your email. So I hope to see you at UniFiji in the near future. All the best and stay safe.
Thank you, Krishnu. Can you stop the recording as well?